Jumbo and a very good evening to all of you Bona Sifiwe. Welcome to this edition of the Evening Devotion. It's a pleasure to have you. God bless you as we continue reflecting together on the first letter of John. We are in the concluding verses of this letter. Yesterday we were looking at God who answers prayer and we were encouraging one another that uh, the two criterion for, for, for prayer being answered is that number one, we must have the confidence in prayer. And that confidence, we, we looked at the areas that make it possible for us to be confident before God in prayer. And uh, we looked at the issue of having a clear conscience. We looked at the issue of uh, confessing our sins. We looked at the issue of uh, resolving our issues, whether it is with the brethren or for those, for those who are in, in marriages with the spouses. But more importantly, walking with God, abiding in Christ. So that those were the confidence boosters. And then yesterday we looked at the will of God. Not only must, must we be confident, we must also necessarily pray in the will of God. And so that is what we were looking at yesterday. So today we move that theme by looking at what we are calling praying for the sinning brother. Remember I told you that... Uh, we are going to be looking at this whole issue of sin. And today is when we start by looking at the admonition to pray for the sinning brother. So we are going to be considering verses 16 and 17 of chapter 5 of the letter. So please go with me to the text so that we can look at it and see what we can learn from the text of verse 16 and 17. First John chapter 5 verse 16 and 17. Today we are going to dwell primarily on verse 16 and then tomorrow we are going to consider I mean verse 16 and tomorrow we will consider verse 17. So there on your, on your screen, that is the text of the day. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I repeat. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that he should pray about that. Verse 17. All wrongdoing is sin. And there is sin that does not lead to death. Okay. So now today we are going to try and wrestle with this scripture that is... Uh, that is one of the most difficult to, uh, to interpret. But we are going to try and look at both the content and the context of this scripture. I am sure some of you who are keen Bible scholars have looked at this, uh, this text. And I am sure you have often wondered... Uh, what really this is all about. So by the end of it, by the end of the day tomorrow, we hope to have uh, attempted to, 
to to look at this text and to look at the both the content uh, what it means and the context uh, how how we are supposed to interpret that text so for today we are going to be looking at if anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death we are going to uh, jump this for today that does not lead to death we are going to look at that in detail tomorrow god willing today we are just going to look at sin generally and we are going to consider the admonition that we have here to pray for the brethren we have a responsibility remember previously john has told us that if we hate our brother then we are liars we don't know god we have not even seen god now here john is telling us that not only should we not hate our brothers but we should look out for our brothers and when we see our brothers in sin in brackets that does not lead to death we shall consider that tomorrow when we see our brother fall into sin we have a responsibility to pray and remember this is coming right on the heels of uh, our, uh, our our scripture of assertion that god answers prayers and so because god answers prayers god is able to answer the prayer of that brother who is sinning who is falling into sin and so we have a responsibility to look out for each other and that is what john is talking about because remember remember that we said in chapter 2 i think that uh, if we say we are without sin we make him a liar okay so it is that concept or concept of sin as a missing of the mark we all miss the mark so in that respect we are all sinners and therefore we have a responsibility to pray for one another now the christian has three enemies okay the first enemy is the devil himself the second enemy is the flesh and the third enemy is the world so we have three enemies as christians number one, we have the devil and the devil comes to us in diverse ways and he comes to us the way he came on eve at the garden of eden and introduced lies and doubt about god so all of us we have to confront the devil because the devil comes to us and lies to us about our relationship with god and so when you see a brother who has been visited upon by the devil we have a responsibility to pray for them the devil also comes to bring physical suffering and affliction remember the story of job job suffered physically he suffered loss and all this was brought about by the devil and the devil had gone to god to seek permission okay so some people are suffering and their suffering is not because they have done anything wrong they have not sinned but the enemy has come upon them 
we have a responsibility particularly when we see our brethren suffering we have a responsibility to pray for them okay and then we have the issue of the flesh the flesh is the old nature remember that we are all born in sin and then upon being born again we have this divine seed that has been put in us that keeps growing but the old nature is not dead it is only subdued and sometimes it brings up its ugly head and sometimes we do things because of the old nature because of the flesh and so every christian has to battle with their old nature for some the old nature is lying for some the old nature is anger for some the old nature is sub substance abuse for some the old nature is a b c d people are battling with their old nature in different ways we have a responsibility to pray for them particularly when we can clearly see that so and so is struggling on this area so and so brother so and so sister so and so is struggling in this area or in that area we have a responsibility to pray for them but unfortunately most of us when we see a brother struggling with a particular sin all we do is gossip about them all we do is pontificate is stand on that high moral ground and point fingers at them instead of praying for them instead of bringing them to the fold all we do is talk about them is gossip about them yet we have a responsibility according to scripture we have a responsibility when we see that sinning brother we have a responsibility to pray for them and i wonder when finally the books are opened on that great judgment day what will god say about that brother what will god say about that sister that you so fall in sin and you did absolutely nothing or at best you gossiped about it what will god say to you on that final day and so we have the devil we have the flesh which is the old nature and we have the world the environment this means that because although we do not belong to the world yet we live in this world and i want to tell you that some people are working in very difficult circumstances some people are working in very difficult environments the so that the environment that they are working in eh, they have to they have to fight every day every day it's a fight some of you when you go to work in the morning you are all smiles some people when they wake up to go to work let me tell you the kind of environment that they are working in my friend it is a battle of the conscience the whole day think about that person who works in that office where the tenderpreneurs of this nation uh, have have set camp and they are waiting and look at that clerk who must prepare these invoices some people are working in very difficult circumstances we have a responsibility to pray for them some of you are working in sanitized 
environment. But some people are working in very difficult environments. Maybe in your kind of job, you don't have to worry about the world. Your world is cool. It is okay. But some people are working in such difficult environments that it is only by God's grace that they can be able to live through one shift without falling into sin. So we have a responsibility to pray for one another. We have a responsibility to pray for each other. Whether we are battling the devil directly or whether we are battling the flesh, pride, the, the lust of the eye and the pride of life, or whether we are dealing with difficult environments. We have a responsibility. Seeing that God answers prayers, we have a responsibility to pray for those brothers we see falling in sin so that God will give them life. Because we do not want them dead in sin again. And so it is important that we be our brother's keeper. It is important that we remember them. And when we see them falling in sin, we have a responsibility to pray for them. Now, tomorrow we are going to be considering this issue of a sin that does not lead to death. And so we are going to be looking at the sins that lead to death. We are going to be looking at the biblical examples of sins that lead to death. And then we are going to wrap it up by considering the context of John and what he really meant by this. And remember that he qualifies by saying that all wrongdoing is sin. We are not saying that there is a better sin than the other. No, all wrongdoing is sin. But there is a sin that leads to death. That is what we shall consider tomorrow. But for tonight, let us take this home by taking the burden upon us to pray for each other. When you see a brother in sin, when you see a brother falling in sin, pray for them. Don't talk about them. Don't publicize them. Don't publish their sin all over. Take the burden. In fact, if you have not told God about it, you have no business telling anybody else about it. And if you have told God about it, then it is settled you have no business telling others about it. And so, have you seen a brother fall in sin? Have you seen a sister fall in sin? Tell it to God in prayer. And when you do that, leave it to God. He is able to answer that prayer. Remember, we are talking about a God who answers prayers. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Don't talk about them. If you, if you cannot open that mouth before God and pray for that person, shut it up. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you because of the burden that you have given us, the responsibility to pray for one another. How often we have fallen short of that. And how often we have talked about each other instead of praying for one another. We pray that you may forgive us. And going forward, we ask that you may enable us by your grace to pray for one another. Even as we see each other falling in sin, 
Because if we say that we are without sin, we make you a liar. We pray that, Lord, we will not be part of the gossip, but that we are going to be bringing those persons who have fallen in sin before the throne of grace and mercy. Because that is our responsibility as members of the family of God. But seeing that we have the devil, the flesh, and the world to contend with, we pray that, Lord, even as you have promised us that we are victors, we pray that by faith you shall continue helping us. And when you have helped us, we pray that we may help others who have fallen in sin. Be with us. Forgive us our trespasses. And where we have engaged in gossip, we seek your forgiveness, O God. Where we have celebrated when others are falling in sin, we feel ashamed and pray for your forgiveness. And going forward, O God, we ask that we shall be truly our brother's keeper. Hear us, O God, meet with us at our points of need. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So there we go. Let us pray for one another. Let us pray for the brother. And let us not talk about them. Let us talk to God only about them. Now tomorrow we are going to consider the sin that leads to death. What does John mean? And what does the scripture say about this sin that leads to death? So thank you very much for finding time to tune in. It's always a pleasure to have you. And before I sign off, I would like to appreciate once again the people on my screen. And Bogwa, God bless you. Jackson Ginyi, God bless you. Kezi Angoge, Barikiwa Sana, Gladys Kibe, God bless you. Winnie Kemani, God bless you. Eve Kingston, God bless you. Anne Wanjiko, God bless you. Anne Muthami, Barikiwa Sana, Esther Ivan, God bless you. Priscilla Kerothe, God bless you. Julia, Anne Julia Wanjiko, Kanyare, God bless you. Mary Eunice, God bless you. Isaac Karato, Barikiwa Sana, Domiciano Kobia, God bless you, Purity Njiro, God bless you, Juliet Kenywa, good to see you, God bless you, Dishon Joseph, Barikiwa Sana, Esther Ivan, God bless you, Jason Macharia, God bless you. So thank you very much, it's a pleasure to have you here and so let us let us continue praying for one another what a joy it would be if you went to heaven and then you discovered that it is your prayer that turned a brother who was about to fall and God brought them back so God bless you and see you 